You know, choosing to buy a laptop these days is a pretty difficult choice. You have to choose between the various Windows PC or a Mac. But there is also a third option, which is going for Chromebooks with running Chrome OS. And there are a few good reasons why you want them. Firstly, it's the most budget-friendly choice among the three of them. Secondly, it's probably the simplest to work with as well among the three of them. Lastly, you still get to choose among all the favorite brands you have except for Apple. So that gave us an idea. Now it's probably a good time for us to tell you that our sponsor for this video is Acer. Before we go on any further, we want to highlight what we got for our little experiment. And thanks to Acer, they gave us this. This is the Chromebook Spin 713, powered by the 11th generation Intel Core i5, the 1135G7 to be specific. And it comes with Intel Iris Xe graphics. It's not the most powerful GPU in the market, but it is acceptable for a Chromebook. It also comes with 256 gigabytes of SSD storage uh, inside it and eight gigabytes of RAM, both of which you cannot really expand. And Acer has told us not to open this thing up so we can't tell you what it looks like inside as well. Yes, this is a spin notebook, which also means that it is a convertible with a 13.5 inch display and the display is protected by glossy glass which is good news for its colors and the 2256 by 1504 pixels yes it is a bit odd at 3 by 2 but it is a very nice very big display for all sorts of multitasking and you can put whatever on it and it looks really really good the speakers are not that great so you might want to have a bluetooth speaker or just use your headphones if you want to so you get two USB Type-C ports on one side, both of which are Thunderbolt 4 ports and both support PD, which also means that if you plug into two 4K displays and one of them at least supports PD of at least 45 watt, this will get charged immediately, no problem. There is also an HDMI port to, for you to plug into another display so you can have like, what, three to four displays on this one. Also, there is another USB port here. It's a USB type A port, which also means that you can plug in all your accessories or even your thumb drive, maybe even your hard drive if you want. One of the most annoying part about buying a new PC or buying a new Mac is the setup process because on them, there's a lot of things for you to do and they want you to do a lot of things. You don't just have to sign into your Apple or Microsoft account. You do have to do a lot of setup. And once you're in, you still have to start from scratch because you have to install all your apps from the beginning. You know, you have to find it or you have to download it and you have to install it. Not the case on the Chrome OS. It took us less than five minutes to actually set it up when we first got it, basically starting from zero. And if you already have the Chrome OS before this, all you need to do is sign into your Google account and everything else will be taken care of. All your apps, if they can be found on the Chrome Web Store or the Google Play Store, it will be installed immediately. We have to admit that we've never really fully experienced the Chrome OS because before this, we never really saw this Chromebook as a proper option compared to the Mac and Windows. But Google or a lot of the manufacturers have been pushing this as a computing solution for the enterprises. So here we are. The home screen or sort of the desktop is quite unique. You can change the background, you can change the wallpaper, but that is sort of it. You can't add shortcuts to it. You can't add widgets to it. Very unlike an Android home screen. It just is kind of like an empty landing page for a vanity piece for the laptop itself or for yourself if you want. Everything else though feels very similar and very, very familiar if you come from the Android experience, except that this is more keyboard and mouse optimized, if you will. The keyboard itself is a little different from what we are used to on the Mac and the Windows. For example, there is no caps lock button anymore. It's just a app tray launch button, which is quite big, which is kind of like the Windows button, but enlarged and in a different place. There's no function rows as well. It's just 
a row of buttons with functions on it, which is rather nice because there is the back button, the refresh button, the full screen button, the multitasking button, and even screen capture button on this particular laptop. You can also change the size of your icons and how big or small things look on the screen uh, within the settings, kind of pretty much like your Windows. Once you flip it around, it becomes a tablet device. It's not exactly an Android tablet, but it is close and feels rather similar, especially with Google Play Store. You have the app tray, but instead of the tablet-like interface where the app tray basically takes up the entire display, this doesn't. This is more like the Windows interface now where it's on the bottom left corner. It looks more like the start menu instead of taking up the whole display. But this is also a new interface for Chrome OS 100 and above. The most current Chrome OS that we're using at the time of filming is Chrome OS 105. There is no stylus that comes with this Chromebook since Chrome OS has been a very big supporter of USI or Universal Stylus Initiative, which kind of makes things interesting because we can find other stylus manufacturers. But at the same time, it makes it very expensive. So we are also quite annoyed with that. Then we get to work with this thing. And firstly, there is no Microsoft 365 suite for Chrome OS because Microsoft. So we do have to work with the web version of it. And that's not actually a bad thing. We work a lot with Microsoft Word and Microsoft Word and Microsoft PowerPoint, at least, is much closer to the actual PC version or the Mac version on the web instead of the app for Android. So that is a huge bonus for us. The only issue is that we have to keep this connected to the internet for it to work with Microsoft Word or Microsoft PowerPoint on the web. So it can be rather tough at times when you don't have Wi-Fi or data on the go. There is a good thing there as well because Android smartphones actually work very well with this stuff. It took us less than two to three minutes to connect our Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra to this notebook. And from there, you can basically share everything. Notifications can be shared on this. Basically, you can see all your notifications on this. You can reply to your WhatsApp messages, to your Telegram messages, and even connecting it to the hotspot, a personal hotspot is very easy and you can do it via the Chromebook itself. On the side of entertainment, especially music, you still have access to Tidal and Spotify app on the Google Play Store. But we do recommend you to use the Tidal's web player instead because the app just kind of looks bad, doesn't work properly. Although Spotify's app on this Chromebook actually works fine. You have it in smartphone interface or tablet interface, or you can just resize it however you want and it works very well. On the end of movies, you still can use the Netflix and Amazon Prime app as well. That's what we use. On the laptop, you can download it via Google Play Store, but we tend to prefer the web experience as well over the app. But here's also where the problem lies because this experience of the Chromebook relies so much on the Google Chrome that you need to keep your Chromebook connected at all times. And then there is gaming on the Chromebook and Google has been talking about gaming on the Chromebook, but I don't think that's the first thing that you think about when you want to buy a Chromebook. You technically can play games on this notebook because you can download Android games on it like PUBG Mobile, uh, Pokemon Unite, and even Mobile Legends Bang Bang if you want. And you can get all of them on the Google Play Store. It's just that there is an inherent compatibility issue with all the games that's available on Google Play Store. So Pokemon Unite and Mobile Legends Bang Bang, MLBB basically failed to launch a couple of times. When we go into matchmaking, it crashes once the timer counts down. But eventually after a couple of tries, you actually get to play these games and they work pretty okay. PUBG Mobile goes into compatibility mode, so you can't actually play with your friends who are on their smartphones. Because the graphics of these games are not made to run on a screen this size or this resolution, things look a little bit more pixelated than we are used to on a smartphone. Then there is Steam on this Chromebook. Well, it is on Alpha Build on select Chromebooks, and we are happy to report that this is one of them. This is the Voltier Chromebook that you will see in the list. And installing it is not very difficult. It takes a bit of work, but if you have the right instructions and the right guides, it's very easy to do and it's very fast. 
Scaling is one of the biggest issues we think that they have with the Chrome OS and the general optimization is just still really bad on the Chrome OS. You do want to keep in mind that this is an alpha build on the Chrome OS and they will fix the problems in a, on a later date when it's closer to launch. But for now, if you want to have Steam on the Chromebook, you're still going to have to encounter a lot of issues with it and sometimes it might not even launch. So can you live with a Chromebook or a Chrome OS for that matter? And the not so straightforward answer to that is no, because you can't run specific programs on it, you can't run specific functions uh, on it like video editing software or 3D rendering applications and things like that. If you want to game on it, you can't really do that, at least not for now. But if you are looking for a thin and light laptop, if you are looking for something that comes with no fuss, no frills, and at a budget, the Chromebook is a serious contender. This Chromebook Spin 713 will set you back 3,799 ringgit. An equivalent Windows PC, that is the Acer Spin 5, will set you back 4,599 ringgit. That's 800 ringgit more. So that is our take on the Google Chromebook. Let us know what you think of the Google Chromebook or if you disagree with us or agree with us in the comments down below. If you like this video, please do give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel because that will help us a ton. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Oh,